Hi, this is Dr. Pat. We're looking at the part two of the derivative, the algebraic approach, uh, working with this difference quotient. That's what we call this fraction here. It's called the difference quotient. So we basically have kind of four overall steps that we have to do. Uh, in the numerator, the first thing we have to do is figure out what's the formula we get when we plug in x plus h into the original formula. We'll expand that out, do some algebra, and then we'll subtract the original formula, and that'll get us what the numerator of this fraction's worth. And then we'll reduce out that h because some things are going to simplify for us and we'll be able to cancel some things out. And then our last step is because we want to get the slope of the tangent. Um, and so that means tangent, the two x values get really close together. We're getting an interval of zero. That's what we'd like to have. And so we're going to plug zero in for uh, the formula. And that's what we're looking for. And that's basically a simplistic look at the limits. Basically, we're getting our x values closer together and our interval size goes to zero. And so what I like to do these four steps on these three examples. So we're going to be playing with these three examples. So if you're feeling comfortable, go ahead, hit pause, work these three examples, and then come back and check your, check your work. All right, for our first one, we're looking at uh, g, g of w. Uh, I'm using different letters here. I'm not keeping up with the f of x, just so that uh, you can get familiar with it. And uh, you can basically say, dudes, we can do it with f, x, g, w, whatever you like. And so that's where I'm shooting for. So I just don't want you getting so used to f of x. But uh, in math, you know, the letters really don't matter to us. It's about the relationships. All right, so our first step is we want to get that g of w uh, plus h. So we're taking uh, the package deal, the w plus h, and wherever we see w in the original formula, we're putting a w plus h. And then what we want to do is kind of work this, uh, this formula. Uh, because we have w plus h quantity squared, remember that's w plus h times w plus h. And that's basically what I'm getting here uh, in the pink here, a w squared plus 2wh plus h squared. And then the next thing I want to do is uh, bring the 2 through and bring that negative 5 through. And that's the expression. The coefficients change there by just distributing that 2 and that 5. And so now what we have here is we have a formula for the g of w plus h, that first part of it. Step number two now is to take the, the formula we've got and we'll subtract out the original formula. And when we do that, we'll end up with a nice little thing that we can put the, into the numerator of our fraction of our difference quotient. And so I'm taking the, the result that I got from uh, up here, that algebra work, and then I'm subtracting the original formula. And as you can see, the 45s will cancel out, the 2w's cancel out, and the 5w squares cancel out. Just leaving it's a nice 2h minus 10wh minus 5h squared. So now we now have what our inner, uh, the numerator is for our difference quotient. Man, throwing in some math terms there. So step number three, we're going to reduce the h. So we put it in the numerator, what we got from the previous slide, and now we're noticing, hey, everybody's got an h. So we can reduce out the h. Uh, because the last term up here in the numerator has an h squared, we're going to end up with still having an h for that piece. But the other two pieces, we're going to end up with a 2 minus 10w. Step number four is now taking the limit, basically plugging in 0 for our h. When we plug 0 for the h, that last term goes away, and we're left with 2 minus 10w. And this would be the derivative. This would be the formula for the slope of the tangent. We can use this formula to cal calculate the slope of the tangent on that original formula up here of gw. That's 45 plus 2w minus 5w squared. This formula we just calculated, 2 minus 10w, will actually calculate the slope on any point on that graph. So for our second example, we've got j of z is equal to z cubed plus 432. I know it seems kind of freaky, but we're going to basically do the same four steps again. Step number one, we're going to plug in z plus h in for the z. So where I see a z cubed, I now have a z plus h cubed. Now, in terms of algebra, that's z plus h times z plus h times z plus h. Do two of them. 
and then get a result and then multiply that result by z plus h and what we end up with is this nice expanded kind of thing z cubed plus 3z squared h plus a 3z h squared plus an h cubed oh my gosh i'm losing my breath here plus 432 and so that's our formula that we have what we get when we plug in z plus h into the original formula our next step is to subtract out that original formula and uh, when we do that subtraction notice who cancels out the z cubes will cancel out for 432's cancel out and it leaves us everything that has an h it's a common thing here in the previous examples we showed when we do this basically the thing left standing are the things with h's so that's actually a common pattern that we see when we're dealing with polynomials so that always happens with our polynomials we'll basically end up with terms that have h's and so then when we do step number three we make our fraction we go back and plug in uh, the formula for the numerator everything up there has got an h we're going to reduce out an h and so it works out really nice and that happens every single time the h's cancel out and now we've got a nice expression no more fraction um, and so we can plug in 0 for h now. You see, we couldn't plug 0 in for h before because we'd have h in the denominator. But by doing all that algebra, it kicks out the h. We're able to reduce it out. And so now we have an expression with no fraction, no h in the denominator. And so now we can plug in 0 for h. So wherever we see an h in that uh, result that we get, we plug in 0. Our two terms cancel out, leaving us a nice 3z squared for our final answer, and that would be our derivative. This is a formula that we could use to calculate all the slopes of the graph of z cubed plus 432. So that's what the relationship here is. We're coming up with formulas that calculate the rate of change of the original guy. And then we have one last example. Now I've got a fraction here, 3 over t, follows the same pattern. First thing we do is plug in t plus h into that formula, and that's where we see it in the denominator. Our step number two is subtract out the original. And so what I'm doing here is I'm subtracting out the original. I got that 3 over t plus h minus the original 3 over t. Uh, in order to do the subtraction, remember, we have to get common denominator. That's why you're seeing me doing a t over t and a t plus uh, h over a t plus h, is so that we can get common denominator and then we can work the tops so that will give me a 3t and then a 3 times t and a 3 times h here but that's the minus sign don't forget about that minus sign and when we do that algebra the 3 t's will cancel out leaving us a nice negative 3h on the top there we're gonna take this result now we're gonna go and put it in the numerator to make our difference quotient so that we can reduce out the h's and what we're going to reduce out here is this h in the numerator is going to cancel out this h in the denominator, but not this h here. So the h's that cancel out are numerators and denominators, and so this denominator h is going to cancel out with this numerator h. So we're left with negative 3 on top, and then the t and t plus h in the bottom. And because this was a plus h here, that's why we can't cancel it out. All right, our last step is to plug in 0 for h. You might be thinking, dude, we got an h on the bottom. Won't that be bad? But if we plug a 0 on the bottom here, when we plug the 0 here, it doesn't matter because it doesn't make 0 in the denominator because we still have this t squared hanging around. So that's why after we uh, reduced things out, we cleaned up that fraction, did our canceling of the h's, we're okay with plugging in 0 for h, we're okay with doing this limit. And so what ends up happening is our derivative is a negative 3t squared. I know that I went kind of fast through those. I'm hoping that you can hit pause and kind of look at the steps as we go as we went through them. So um, I hope you have a nice day. Sorry for going it too fast, but use that technology. And this is Dr. Pat. Take it easy.